Thank you very much. Uh, so thank you very much for the invitation to talk today. So um, basically, I'm going to talk about one of our, our recent papers, uh, which was published a few weeks ago in microbiome. So this paper deals about is about human gut microbiome dependent energy extraction. And to take you into the start of this story, I want to bring you back to a paper published in 2006 by some of the leading researchers in the world um, who showed that if you transplant, transplant microbes from obese donors into germ-free animals, then compared to uh, animals receiving uh, microbes from lean donors, the mice that got uh, their microbes from the obese donors, they gained more body fat over time despite consuming the exact same feed. So this was a very uh, provo provo provocating uh, paper that really kicked off the field. But, a sm but a another result in this paper also found that uh, if you looked into the fecal energy uh, that was left in the stool, they actually observed that the, their mice receiving their obese microbes, they had less energy left in the stool. So they proposed that maybe their differences in, in body fat was driven by differences in fecal or difference by in capacity for energy harvest of the microbes. So a few, a few years later, actually 10 years later, I was part of a study where we did something similar. We took uh, microbes from either obese or lean Danish children and we transplanted them into uh, germ-free mice. This time we had 16 donors in, in each group. And again, we found that the mice that received uh, microbes from their obese donor, they gained more weight over time compared to the control group. And another interesting finding in this paper was that if, you, uh, if we correlated their energy that was left in the stool of these uh, mice, we could see an inverse relationship to the weight gain. So in other words, the mice that uh, had less energy left in the stool were the mice who gained the most weight. Since then, actually not a lot has been done in the field when it comes to uh, the microbiome composition and energy extraction. But in our lab, we are very interested in the role of intestinal transit time because we think that's a key factor that shapes uh, gut microbial uh, composition and also metabolism. And one um, way we can look at the microbiome, gut microbiome composition is through the intertypes, which were pioneered by Pierre Borg, who, who gave a talk uh, just a few, few moments ago. And I think that, or we think that intertypes to some extent is driven by differences in transit time. And we think these preferred microbial community structures are interesting to, to look further into. So intertypes have been studied and discussed globally, and you can discuss how many types you have, and it all depends on the way you do the clustering and so forth. But just a few highlights. So the bacteroides intertype has consistently been linked to animal fat, whereas the Prevotella has been linked to more um, plant-based diet and carbohydrates. And we also published uh, some years ago that overall their uh, intertypes, if you just infer it by the ratio between Prevotella to Bacteroides, remain overall pretty stable during a six month uh, randomized trial in, in Denmark. Uh, so so even, they, even though the participants were on a, on a dietary intervention, they, they remained overall stable. We have also at our department uh, observed uh, several times that people who have a more higher abundance of Prevotella lose more easily weight on a new Nordic diet. They lose more easily weight, high Prevotella here on a whole grain diet compared to a refined wheat diet. And we also see that there, in, in this example, it's, it's a group with, that has uh, low Prevotella, high bacteroides that they gain more weight when put on a, a fiber intervention with axis. So although these are observational studies and we cannot uh, be 100% sure also because the sample size are somehow limited, it do suggest that entry types could be relevant when it comes to weight loss. Um, the group in, in Belgium uh, led by uh, Professor Jérôme Brass, he has also uh, with his colleague found that if you look at their intertypes and the metabolic capacity, then you actually see some distinct differences. So the bacteroides intertypes seem to have higher uh, metabolic capacity for both saccharolysis, lipolysis, and protolysis. 
And also, if you look at microbial richness, then you see a higher diversity, you see a higher functional redundancy in their R and P type compared to the B type. And in contrast, you see that the B type is characterized by, by having an average higher uh, maximum growth rate, suggesting that their B type has a faster system somehow. So back to our study, uh, we recruited 85 overweight uh, subjects. Uh, we measured their transit time using radio peak markers. Uh, we recorded their habitual dietary intake, and then we collected their stool sample and a urine sample on the same day as transit time was obtained. And I had a master's student, Naomi Venlet, who, who was kind to measure the stool energy density in, in uh, all these samples. So in other words, how much energy is left per gram dry stool. And then we look at the microbiome composition together with Jos Bockhorst, and he grouped their uh, participants into the three intertypes here, divided by the three characteristic uh, genera or, or families. And first of all, we look into the intertypes, and what was very interesting was that the B type, which has been linked to a Western lifestyle and, and an animal-based diet, was having less energy left in the stool compared to the B and R type. We could also see that transit time was lower in the B type, so they had a faster system compared to the others. And very interestingly, intriguingly, we saw that the B type had a higher body weight compared to the other types. While this is an observation and we cannot whether, know whether it's causal, it do uh, raise some new uh, questions here. So we then ask the question, how are these uh, intertypes different in terms of their community structure? And we could definitely, definitely, definitely see a difference in diversity differences and in richness differences when we compare the different intertypes. And when we correlated their diversity measures here with the stool energy density, very interestingly, we could see that in particular in the B type, we could see a positive correlation. So the lower richness and diversity, the less energy available in the stool in the end. Well, then you might ask, well, is it not just driven by diet or, or stool counts or bacterial counts? We look into the habitual dietary patterns and actually we couldn't see any differences in overall patterns or in food groups or in dietary fibers or any way. So at least from our data, we cannot uh, prove that this is driven by dietary differences. Also, when we look in the cell counts, number of bacterial cells, that doesn't explain it either, these differences that we see between intertypes. And then we looked into their microbial activity and we measured uh, short-chain fatty acids and uh, acetate, propanin, and butyrate were not, not different in the feces uh, comparing the intertypes. Isobutyrate uh, and their uh, branch chain, uh, short-chain fatty acids were significantly increased in their R-type compared to the B-type and that was consistent with their um, markers of proteolytic fermentation measured in urine. So it suggests that uh, in case of the R-type, which is characterized by a longer transit time, then you have more proteolysis uh, going on, so fermentation of proteins. So to try to summarize this, and this is what we hypothesize based on these observations, is that we think that transit time is an important factor that diversity, diversify the microbiome structure so long transit time, high diversity, alpha diversity. And we think that also affects colonic fermentation, pulling it more towards prolytic fermentation. So when we look at their, uh, when we stratify our individuals into the B and R type, which were the most distinct ones, then we can see that these are characterized by high and low alpha diversity and, and high and low proteolysis. And combined with the paper previously published showing that their B type had a higher uh, capacity for fermentation and also a higher growth potential, we think that these, the faster growth and the faster system potentially driven by a faster transit time may lead to a faster energy harvest in the gut. Um, and whether that translates into differences in body weight, we cannot know uh, based on our study, but that's something we would love to explore further in the, in the, in the future. So with that, I just want to say uh, thanks to the people here highlighted who contributed to the study and to our funding, especially from the Novo Nordisk Foundation. And I'll be happy to take any questions you might have uh, in the Q&A sessions. So thank you very much.